Today, another trip into VHS digitalization. Is this one going to be heaven or is this one going to be hell? We're going to have to find out. It should be easy. Is it going to be easy? You'll find out. And there's a couple of specials coming up on features you may not realize you want or need, but you've got to have. We'll show you everything you need to know in order to make this particular device work. I've done a bit of YouTube research on this and they all get themselves stuck down the rabbit hole of well if you do it this way this will happen and then they go into great details about why things are happening and all the rest of this thing. Well I don't know about you but I'd like to try to keep things simple. When you drive a car do you need to know how to make it go down the road or do you need to know how many millionths of a millimetre the shim was on them. It isn't really necessary. What you need to know, in my opinion, is whether it's going to work. Now, if you saw my one on the the digit now, U170, you'll know that there is problems that that one had. There are ways around the problems and I'll do a video follow up on what to do if you're unfortunate enough to have those sort of problems. But what I wanted to do was just be able to plug the thing in and make it work. So that's what I'm doing in this video. Hopefully this one, which is the tech side this one might do that and it's available from amazon there's a link in the description stay to the end and you'll find out whether it does and whether there's any problems on the way so this one isn't going to be a 40 minute thing about how all the systems work and all the rest of it this is just going to be a very quick plug it in see if it works and if it didn't why not so let's get stuck in we're keeping it simple equipment required one vhs video recorded to play about the tapes and then we're going to need to have connections that go into the back so that's scart connections on this with aerial connections we're not using the aerial connections but there is also rca outputs on this one because this is a hi-fi one and nothing special other than that and then what are we looking on here so you can see there's rca and the two stereo outputs which is important the kit i went for had a scart connector and it also had a lead, but you can just get just this thing on its own, which is a little bit cheaper, but I decided I wanted the SCART connector. You just go with the color codes on there and you plug the USB into the USB socket. That makes sense there. Uh, I'm not using Super VHS, so I'm not using the SVHS input. We go around the back now and you can just see that uh, I'm not using the SCART either on this occasion because this is a Hi-Fi one, it's got the video and the two audio outputs there. So that's nice and simple as far as that's concerned. If we wanted to wander off the subject here and talk about SCART connectors and S connectors and SVHS inputs and all this sort of thing, we could do, but I'm not going to. So let me just say this. If you've got a recorder with an output on S video or super video or SVHS, whatever they want to call it, and you've got the ability to plug that into your device, you'd be better off doing that. But as you see, my machine hasn't got S video, so I'm not going to worry about it. Is it better with S video? Yes. If you had super VHS, I would definitely do it. But with standard VHS, I don't think you'll notice the difference. We've plugged this USB into the USB socket. We've plugged the device into the three leads into the back of the video recorder. Now we've got to start the software. The program supplied is one from a company called ArcSoft. You get a product key, so it's a proper version of it. It's not just the freebie version, it's a slightly better than freebie version. So you actually get a product key with the software and you have to install it. Now you install it from a website. So that's the HP laptop I'm going to use it with. And this is the box. It says it does PowerC Cam NTSC, it says it does in various resolutions, and it says that it's going to do the job properly. And on the bottom, one of the most important bits, download driver and manual from the site. As in, you don't have to use a CD or a DVD drive, you can just download it. Very, very fine print on there, and there's the ArcSoft, go and get the software, and there is the telling you what's what, telling you who they are, and uh, I think basically that's it, so that's the guarantee. At this point you think you're doing all right because you've got the thing there, it's got all the bits, you just plug it in and off you go. Well, that should be what happens, but this is Windows we're talking about and Microsoft and uh, plug-in bits and it's Windows 11. So that wasn't quite as straightforward as it would seem. Let me show you. The first problem was you can't scan this on your laptop, so I had to type it in. And that takes you to an Italian website like this. 
The translate key doesn't work very well because it keeps on reverting back to Italian. But I did find out there's actually a thing up the top to change the language. Then you get this problem. Windows thinks it's a virus. But the instructions how to get around it don't work. Cutting a long story short, download the RAR version, not the standard version, and then Windows doesn't see it as a virus. From then on, it all got pretty self-explanatory, and the software installs quite nicely. And if you just set it up and follow the instructions, it will work. So here we go with a couple of special features I was talking to you about. Not expected, but very useful. This is Shima, and she's doing this in NTSC, DigitNow U170. And let's see what happens when we put it on with the tech side. So this is with the original digit now, and it didn't get any better. This is the result with this one, and I think you can see it's rather good. I don't know what the blue line at the end is, but you can trim that out in editing. This is raw as it came off, and yeah, I think it's pretty good. So this is the PAL tape. It's the commercial PAL tape, which I have uh, never had a problem with, other than the fact that it's, it's got macrovision, and so that's what it was being done. And this is what the U170 did with it. So then we go on to the tech side in a second, and Wilfred. that's what the tech side Primrose. did with it. And there has been no processing, this is the purely the way it came off. Video. It's absolutely wait, gorgeous. Go, wait, go, wait, I don't go, think you could get wait. any better than that. In summer story, so, join the so summer nice. Celebrations I don't want to stop it. And it's in the full stereo, by the way, this tech side. Is in full stereo with no deviation to it. You just, it is in full stereo. I haven't had to do any setting up with it. That is, if all goes Let's have a look now at small soldiers which is an ntsc tape that i got from america and this is the u170 version and you can see in a second we'll go over to the tech side this is the toy soldiers that we saw on the other version and this is nicely locked up in stereo good quality picture and the potential to do some good with it is amazing. Look at that. Obviously it's standards converted, but it's done a good job. So I think overall I can say that I'm quite pleased with the results I've been getting with this. It is actually a device that does what it says on the tin. If you're in the UK, that will mean something to you. If you're not, well, it's one of those things that it does what it says and it says what it does. Back to that Amstrad tape. This is it now with this tech side and the ArcSoft software and you can see it's very good here. I have had to actually tell it that it's NT uh, PAL or NTSC or CCAM within the click down boxes that you see in the software. But So when I said there's no setting up, I wasn't totally, um, it wasn't totally exactly right because there is a minor amount of setting up which is that you have to set the actual software version of the drop down boxes but you don't have to go into the operating system of the computer so it's easy in that respect and you just literally you can see on here i've got to change this this is now playing back an ntsc tape and it's not in color so hit this hit the stop button go into the settings and it will come up in a second there we go so now i've got to set it to tell it that it's ntsc so just click on there it's obviously not any of the pals and uh, just give it a try it says it's pal 60 and will it work no, uh, no it's still in black and white so this has to be told that it's NTSC because it, it needs to know. It's not, it's clever. It's not a genius. So here we go. Should be any second, right? I'll just make sure that it says NTSC to PAL. So it's expecting to get some sort of signal. And let's just see how we get on. It's taking time because I'm being slow. I'm having to work my way around this thing as much as anybody else is. But there is, within there, click on there, there will be the appropriate 
it says it knows what sort of it's happening click on there and we should find NTSC 4.43 click on apply OK and voila it's in colour and that's the way it should be hit the record button and it's now recording the bit that I've shown you already so that's how that bit works it isn't exactly rocket science it's just follow the instructions there are instructions on the website and it all makes sense really so that's how that works within the driver there is the ability to alter the brightness contrast etc but it's if you just go with it as it comes out of the box it produces relatively good results i think you'll find okay let's just call it a day there and um i'll give you a roundup well what i can tell you is it's been a bumpy ride however got there it works the actual device the tech side works very well it's got obviously the ability to lock the, the signals there is um, many reasons why the signals do what they do but um, the device in this case actually manages to deal with 99.9 percent .9 of them without it being a problem so overall the that one um, it's available from well i originally found it on uh, amazon.fr it's from an italian company but i ordered it from amazon uk and it arrived very shortly after i ordered it it was very good in fact there it's windows 11 compatible which is one of the problems that you find with a lot of this stuff it's not necessarily going to be compatible with the windows you've got the earlier type ones you know they give problems but what you saw on there was from windows 11 on a laptop and the machine is more than capable of doing it so overall i would say that this tech side one was worth the money and it's easy to work there's no great difficulty with it their instructions are there you just got a little bit of faffing around with the fact that you've got to find the english version of the website and whatever but that and downloading the raw files rather than the um, as they come files but compared to trying to find a dvd or cd drive to try and load in stuff with the other one it's so much easier i mean I've told you what to do now, so uh, it should work. If it doesn't, let me know. Anyway, if you've got any value out of that, maybe you'd like to click on the like and subscribe and the not notification bell.